Guys, we got the dates for 2023 locked. Maybe a couple more added. Phoenix, I'll see you guys September 29th and the 30th. La Jolla, I'll be back October 20th through the 22nd. Salt Lake City, finally coming back October 27th and the 28th. Hoping to see you all out there. Batavia, Illinois, my first time going there. Very excited, coming on November 10th and November 11th. And San Francisco to close out the year at Cobbs. Cannot wait to get back to one of my favorite cities in the country. December 8th and 9th. All tickets are available on my website at ryansickler.com. I'm very excited to announce that I have teamed up with Blonde Medicine and I am releasing the audio for my special Lefty Son as an album. It drops Friday, September 22nd, everywhere you get music, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, you name it, it'll be out there. Very excited. Go check it out. Support my special on YouTube. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to announce that we have partnered with Spotify. It changes absolutely nothing for you. The added benefit, though, is that you now get video on Spotify. You're going to get the Honeydew audio and video on Spotify. We're very excited to partner with Spotify. It changes absolutely nothing for you. You're not having to pay for anything or anything. Nothing's behind a paywall. None of that. You're just now able to get audio and video on Spotify. So go subscribe to The Honeydew on Spotify today. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I want to say thank you. Thank you again for your support of this show. It's a tough show, uh, especially uh, when you're trying to get past the YouTubes and the algorithms and everything. We're over here talking about real stuff, and sometimes that's frowned upon. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for supporting. Please subscribe. Go watch my special Lefty Son on my YouTube channel. Share it. Get it out there. Um, And look, if you have to have more, then you got to have the Patreon. I'm telling you, listen to me. It's five bucks. There's no tiers, no levels, no nothing. If you sign up for a year, you get over a month worth of episodes free. You get the Honeydew a day early. You get it ad free. No extra cost. And the stories, the Honeydew with y'all, y'all got the wildest stories I've ever heard in my life. There's no comparison. I say every week, what are we going to hear now? Then we hear a guy who we talked to a guy whose parachute didn't open and he (laughs) crashed into the ground in front of his mom. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. We talked to a double lung, it was history, double lung transplant, a double lung transplant, and then the dude stole the guy's girl and his breath, okay? I'm telling you, we've had a we've had a, people who've died nonstop. We've had a girl with two pussies, as I've said all the time. We've had a girl with three anuses, okay? We've had a cold case solved. Five bucks, cup of coffee, you get hundreds of episodes, all right? That's all I'm going to say about it. Come see me on tour if I am in your town when you're around. What do we got coming up here? Let's see. September 29th and 30th, Phoenix, Arizona, October 20th and through the 22nd. Excuse me. That's La Jolla. That's three nights. October 27th and 28th, Salt Lake City, November 10th and 11th, Batavia, Illinois, and December 8th and 9th, San Francisco, California. All right. That's it, y'all. You know what we're doing over here. We're highlighting the lowlights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. And I am very excited to have this guest back on the Honeydew, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Mark Norman. Welcome back to the Honeydew. Hey, hey, good to be here. Boy, you got to go easy with the volume. I was going to say. My head, I'm throbbing here. <laughs> Thank you for I'm powering. A, I'm hungover and gay. <laughs> I'll keep it down now. It was a wild night. You know? um, Comedy's booming in this town. You yeah. feel every every club's giving you drinks and hanging out. And, Did uh, you have, Are you having a good time out here? I love it. I love right, LA. Good, good. I mean, for a, for a minute, you mm-hmm. know. You go downtown, you get a fentanyl shot up your ass. But uh, for now, I'm staying on Sunset. That's all you need. That's all you need, dude. I, and I'm walking from the improv to the store. I'm Did you really? That's yeah. a good. That's a good walk. It's not a bad walk at 18 all. Eighteen minute walk. That's nothing. That's less than a mile. Exactly. Put mm-hmm. a podcast in. Listen to the set. Go there. Go there. No one walks. Yeah. Nobody walks out here. Or the subway. No one's doing that either. There's reasons. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Scary. Um, 
Yeah, these this, these are just. I mean, listen, no scare more scarier than New York subways, but you know. Uh, well, I went down there yesterday here, yeah. and it's uh, it's a ga- it's, it's quite a gathering. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. empty. Yeah, that empty, empty, clean subway is scarier than hobo knife busy Agreed. subway. Agreed. Um, well, look, first, before we get into anything, plug in. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is that my ex? She's, <laughs> she's a real dog. <laughs> plug and promote everything, oh, please. Sorry, I'm, I'm ranting and raving. I, I got a hot special out, soup to nuts, check it out, Holocaust, R word, slavery, we cover it all, trans, gay, queefs, and uh, I'm on the road, uh, you don't say tour, doing all the dates, coming to Europe. MarkNormanComedy.com. Check out We Might Be Drunk on Tuesdays with Stories. That's it. <laughs> um, all right, man. Well, I'm very excited to have you back because we were talking about before. This is the, this is, You haven't been back since the YMH days. Yeah. And this is the second studio since then. So it, it's nice to have you back. It's a beauty, man. You, you've come up in the world. Thank like, you, buddy. And great art on the walls. You got a nice uh, lady That's Jeff producing. Tice over there. That's Kirsten out there working. Killing it. You got a, you got a gay dog now. Gay dog, you, you've gone LA. Gay dog. All in, bro. Are All you from, in. You're from here. No, I'm oh, from Baltimore. Baltimore? Yeah. Holy shit. You yeah. got out. I got out. That's a rough town. I got out. Good for I you. Did. You burned that CVS and you got the <laughs> hell out of there. Dude, you, you see the one with the front door on it? Oh, yeah. It's got a front fucking door on that CVS. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody's house. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> Gillis will send me crazy videos, and he sent me one of, uh, you see the social worker going to the projects in Baltimore, and they beat the shit out of him? No. Oh, dude, it's it's dark. He's just going in, and they're fucking him up? Yeah, he's like a, you know, he's like a hero activist. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to help the black community. And he pulls up. He's like a nerdy white guy. And he just gets out of the, of the car, and they just start wailing on him. And then he's like trying to get back in the car, and one of them's on the roof hitting him like on the top of the head. It's crazy. Yeah, that's where I'm from. There you go. You know. That's why you're um, humble. We call it New Orleans of the of the Mid Atlantic. <laughs> yes, sir. So tell me, um, I want to get into it because I know you had a very different upbringing. Yeah. Um, and it says here you you were in a car chase as a private school teen. So this surprised me. So you went you actually went to private school. Yeah, I went to Catholic school because okay. uh, I went to public school. You know, kindergarten to eighth grade, and it was pretty dicey. A lot of fights. A lot of uh, tension. <laughs> you know, mixing, a lot of mixing. Yeah. And uh, I think my dad was like, your grades are hell. You're an idiot. It's scary over there in the public school. We're putting you in private for four years. Let's just try it. And it, I, I wasn't, I'm an atheist. You know, my parents, we never had religion. The only Even time, then you were? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just never a part of my life. It wasn't like God isn't real. I was just, I didn't know about it. Right. The only time I knew about church is I'd sleep at a friend's house on Saturday and you'd have to wake up, you know, at the sleepover when you're 10 and go to the church with them. You ever oh, do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. You weird. Might. Yeah, it is weird. I was. I grew up Catholic, so when I would go see, like, I'd go to, what, temple with Jewish friends, I'd go see Methodist, and I was like, yes. these are way better, way better. Oh, the everything's so somber, and everything's so, bull, you know, just, oh, yes. that Catholic shit. Forever and yeah. ever. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then turn around. You know what's funny? I can get up in front of, it doesn't matter how many people, Uh I can get up in front of them and be comfortable enough to go out there and tell jokes to thousands of strangers. Sure. But that shit, when they would tell you in church, turn around and peace be with you. Yes. Biggest anxiety. I hate it. Really? You didn't mind that? I thought that was the best part. Oh, God. I don't want to hear about Lazarus or uh, Exodus (laughs) or whatever the fuck. I don't know who you are either, though. (laughs) I I was just like, oh, there's something to do now, you know, and it's not a psalm or a a thing, a dumb rhythm to it. You know, I never do this shit that I was all clueless on. So I like that. I could do that. I'm, so one time I would have got the communion. Good. I said thank you. And like, <laughs> I didn't know because I didn't know you had to do this shit. Ah, yeah, and I was you know I was nine. It's weird. It's, but yeah, and you're a kid. And they want yeah. you to stick your tongue out so they can put that on your tongue. It's like mm, put yeah, this, put the, it in my hands. Bro. Exactly. Put the, it in my hands. He was an inch away from calling me a Jew. <laughs> he was like, "Come on, you fucking heeb, take the take the thing and do that." I didn't know anything. I'm not even Jewish, but I could. I thought I could tell he thought I was. <laughs> You can tell he thought you yeah. were. Uh, okay, so is this this is an all boys school? No, it's, it's co-ed okay. and it's uniform and it's mass and all that shit. So and walk me through a day. 
I mean, a day is a. Uh, you get there. What do you? What's your uniform? What colors are you wearing? Charcoal plant pants, black shoes, white t shirt tucked in. You know, button down. Not t shirt. White button down. De La Salle crest, mm -hmm. and uh, you could you could throw a hoodie on. You know, a school hoodie or something like that. So that was pretty much it. I never washed it. I had the yellow armpits because you know you just have like three shirts. You just wear them for the rest of your life, and. Uh, it was uptown New Orleans, which was a trek for us, and it was a nice area. The whole thing was a culture shock. It was a culture shock in the sense that this is the first time, what, you're seeing people with money or in a different class than you? Money, Catholic, private, Catholic, all yeah. the rules. I never wore a uniform in my sure. life. Uh, I was just like a, I don't want to say latchkey kid, but I was just like a dumbass, feral dude. You know, I was running around and uh, jizz on the pants, you know, bad hair, <laughs> braces, I was a mess. And this was like high school, armpit hair, girls, you know, it was super awkwardness. Yeah. Yes. I would go to school in sweatpants, you know, and I was always the kid with the shoes untied. I don't know why. I think I had a helmet. I was an idiot. But uh, yeah, this was a big change for me. I never know how to pray. I didn't know what assembly was. I didn't know what mass was. So big shift. And were you the only kid like that? Were these kids already assimilated or were, did you find some kids where they, they were like, I don't know what the fuck's going on either? Well, it's one of those high schools that started in eighth grade. OK, you yeah. know, those. Yeah, that was news to me. So yeah. they all knew each other. I've heard of that. I no, ours wasn't either. Ours was ninth grade. Oh, yeah. That's oh, what... yeah. So they already knew each other from that year, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I felt like the odd man, I, you know, I'm not religious. I, I don't do private. This is all new. And they knew each other. So it was a, I almost shot the school up. You know, <laughs> I, was, I was right there. I felt so out of place. But we made it work. We made friends and you adapt and you figure it out and it was fine. But made a lot of friends. We did a lot of pranks, a lot of fun times. Uh, met, met some great gals, you know, girlfriends and whatnot. Uh, but point being, getting to the story, senior year, you know that last week of senior year where you're like, all right, it it's coming to an end. It, there's an energy in the air. You know, you got your prom, you got your graduation, you got it's ending. You're gonna go to college. Holy shit, this is wild. So that last week was just like party central. You know, every you're a senior, you own the fucking school, you know everybody. So it was that last week. Two days before graduation. There's a place in New Orleans called The Fly. That's what we called it. It was like a giant park on the water on the Mississippi River. Everybody would just go there and drink. That was like fist fights with The Fly, make out at The Fly, you know, uh, crawfish boil at The Fly. We got a keg at The Fly. It was always The Fly. I don't know why it's called that. But we're out at The Fly. We got kegs all day. It was like a half day. So we went straight to The Fly, kegs, drinking, drinking, drinking. I had a 1971 Cutlass Supreme convertible. Oh yeah, the convertible. Shit oh, it was a beauty. It was a, it was it was uh black guys would always pull up and go, "How much? You want to <laughs> sell it?" It was like a hoopty, but it, it was a great looking car. Uh, always had the top down. The top was ripped, so I just left it down. I would yeah. let it rain in there. You, you would, know? yeah. Oh yeah, and everybody loved the car. It was a great car. So we're drinking at the fly, and then my buddy goes. Jay's having a big house party. House parties were everything back then. That's me too. That How old are you it. now? I'm 39. Oh man, I've got you by 11 years, but what? still, that was that was the thing too. House parties and field parties. Field parties. Yeah, if you didn't have a house, we would just meet in a field. There you go. Yeah, that's what the fly was. It yeah. was just just grass with okay. trees. Okay, all right. And uh, you know, a lot of pickup trucks. Somebody mm -hmm. throws the music on, and you're good to go. Bonfire. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Party at Jay's house. We've been drinking for hours, you know, senior, in the uniform, going at it. And uh, we go, all right, I'll drive to Jay's. Me and my buddy. Wait, have I told this on air? Oh, oh fuck. It doesn't matter. I don't oh, remember. Oh, shit. Well, me and my buddy Packy, he was a little kid. His last name was like Pakinski. So everybody just called him Packy. But he was one of these kids. He was like a, a sophomore, but he was this tall, and he was the wildest kid on the planet. He was like a Steve-O. So everybody liked him because he would he would just go up to a guy and just call him a racial slur. You're like, hey, get, here's five bucks. Go call that Asian no. guy, whatever. Not not to be mean, but just like to see if he would do it. He was a guy who would jump off that into the pool. Well, yeah, go punch that kid in the face. He would just do anything. <laughs> right. Eat this pill. And he would just eat it. You know, and now he's, you know, roofied or whatever. So he was just that kid and everybody loved him because he was just pure entertainment. This is pre-internet. You needed that kid. Yeah. <laughs> so it's me and Packy. You know, I got a fucking 
15 year old in my car and we're driving and it's rush hour it's like five o'clock so we're trying to get across town we've been drinking all day uniform on and i'm trying to get off i gotta get off of this exit and i go can i get in it's bumper to bumper and this guy's like nah no dice and i was like jeez man like he was super mean i'm drunk he was like no you're not getting in fuck you kind of thing so i was like all right screw this guy so i got in behind him and i just give him a tap a bumper tap on purpose you did on purpose just to be yeah. like hey hey you're a douche, mm-hmm. which I was the totally the douche. You know, I'm a young, fucking young, dumb and full of cum. You know, it was just it's coming out of my eyes. So I gave him the bumper tap so that he's like, what the hell? He's going nuts in the mirror. He's like, are you crazy? And we're all like, ah, you know, fucking with him, me and Packy. And then uh, I bump him again. You know, it it, it got good to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked yeah, it. It yeah, felt good. Yeah. So I bump him again. And now he just puts the car in park. It's bumper to bumper. Gets out. How big is this dude? He's kind of like a, he's a tall, wiry guy. Is he he's older? Or? Older. I'd say yeah. like maybe 40. Okay. And as a kid, when you see a 40-year-old, oh, that's an adult. But he had a tank top on and long hair. and stuff. He, he kind of was a little uh, a little crunchy. You know, maybe a little surfery, hacky sacky. <laughs> yeah, hacky sacky. Yeah, but he was grizzled. Like he had a white, kind of a white facial hair. And he, mm-hmm. he'd been around. He'd probably been to a dead show. And he's done peyote. <laughs> and uh, he's got a, a scruffy dog, so he was a weird character. But he, you know, he looked like he had some some characters in his life. Dead wife, who the hell knows? <laughs> Dead wife. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was a little. <laughs> he's bringing the heat. Yeah, this guy was no joke. <laughs> Did, and wait, real quick, please. When he gets out of the car. Do you, are you like, yeah, let's go? Or do you have that moment of, oh, shit? Like, do you have, like, I, what what hits you first? I definitely had the, oh, shit. Like, oh, because you're drunk and you, right. you think you're invisible. You're invincible. also driving drunk and tapping him, yes. too. Yes. Drawing way too much attention to yourself. 100%. I thought he's a he's a grown-up. He's yeah. not going to fight us, you know, but. Uh, and yeah. you're, you're, Packy's 15 at the time, you said? Yeah, he was like a sophomore And or you're freshman. 18, 17? 17, 18, right, yeah. So. About to graduate. Yeah. Feeling good. Got the world as my anal. <coughs> Sorry, a little semen. <laughs> so he gets out of the car and he starts walking towards us and he just slams his fist on the hood like like a gorilla. Like, ah. And your top's down? Top's down. Oh, you're an easy target. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think we're smoking in there. He just slams the thing. We're like, Jesus Christ. And then he walks past me and I was kind of like, oh, here we go. And he goes to the back of my car, looks at the license plate, kind of memorize it. And then he gets back and he goes into his car. I was like, huh, that was weird. All right. I thought that was going to be a lot worse. So now I bump him again. No, you I did couldn't not. help it. <laughs> I am, I'm almost at a blackout, by the way. It has been like six hours of, of Miller Lights and a keg. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, traffic kind of opens up once we get off the highway or the freeway. And now I'm on the street level. I'm on Magazine Street and race. I remember this. And I, I hit, we're going up, I'm following him. He hits a, a red light coming up. So he stops at the end of the intersection. So now I'm stuck in the intersection. Mm-hmm. You know, he knew what he was mm-hmm. doing. So now I'm just like about to get T-boned here. I'm like, oh shit, I can't get around him. He's on his phone. Before I know it, there's a bar on the on the left side of me. A guy runs out of the bar, leather vest, you know, chain wallet, jeans, boots, biker guy. He runs out of the bar and jumps in my car. Get the fuck out, I swear dude. to God. He jumps in, and I was like, ah! I mean, this guy's terrified. He's <laughs> definitely killed a gay guy. You know, this guy was, he had like a tooth earring, you a know, chains earring. all over him, tattoos. Terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. He was not fucking around. He was a hell's angel or whatever you want to call it. One of those groups. And he just jumped right in your fucking car. He jumped right in. And it was oh, there was shit. no like, hey buddy, I don't yeah, yeah. it was just it was just in. So this is the this is where oh, nobody believes God. me. So I am freaking out. Um, you know, the you realize like I'm a child. What yeah, am I doing yeah, here? So you got two kids are in this car. Yes, yeah. we're in high school uniforms for Christ's sake. <laughs> so he's in the back seat and he he kind of I started kind of trying to drive when he I didn't know what he was doing, but I couldn't get away. But I got a little bit of inch up or moved a little, and he jumped in. He kind of was half in, half out. So his legs are dangling outside of the car, but his body, the front part of the top part of the body's in the back seat. So I was like, ah! And this again, Packy, wild man, fearless, 
He jumps in the back seat and they're going at it. No. I swear to God, because he had an advantage because the guy was kind of yeah, like. He's got his torso in the car. Exactly. He just back there giving it to him. Yeah, so oh, yeah. just, he, you know, a we good don't, friend. We don't right know there. how to fight. So and it's you're a lot in the of this middle shit. of an intersection. Yes, Stop, yes, too. This exactly. Is <laughs> so I fucking pull crazy, off and dude. I just go, you know, cut through Trav. I just <laughs> ate people, you know, and I'm like. Oh, the guy's there, still hanging in the car. He's kind of crawled in, yeah. but he's a little uh, he's a little wonky because yeah. he's trying to get his footing. And I'm driving and swerving, and they're going at it in the back seat. And obviously, this guy is getting the best to pack. He's a 15 year old, <laughs> yeah. soaking wet. He's a hundred pounds, you know. And they're just going at. It. I'm like, push him out, push him <laughs> out. I'm freaking out. I don't know. I'm trying to do one of these, yeah. you know, like yeah. grab the guy a little bit. And uh, Packy just got that that. Tard strength. I don't know the <laughs> adrenaline, and he pushed him out. Did he? And he pushed him out, and I remember looking back, and he's, you know, like out of a movie, just the rolling on the cement. Do 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 do. And I was like, ah, what the fuck? Oh my god, I can't believe what's happening. So Packy comes up front. He's a little banged up, and he's like, oh my god, that was crazy. <laughs> This guy must have been 55. I mean, he's definitely been in a lot of scuffles. And he's been to war. This he's been to, been to war. This guy yeah. might have been a nom. Yeah. He had a yeah. fucking, he was yeah. huffing glue back in the, the 40s. Who knows? Oh, that's killing me. So he's, uh, we're, we, we drive a little bit and we pull oh, over. Shit. We just have to like regroup. We're just like, oh my fucking God, what is happening? Is that guy alive? Is, is he dead? Did he get hit by another car? Yeah. Where's the other guy? Is he still around? I mean, it was. It was insanity. So we kind of come to, and I had a beeper. Aging myself. I had a beeper, and it was uh, it was saying, like, Jay's house, or, or par- here's the address. Here's the address. And it's going off, and I'm like, all right, let's go to this party. We'll just have a drink, take it easy, tell everybody the story. So cut to us at the party. We're the kings of the party. I'm holding court. I'm in the living room <laughs> yeah. telling everybody the story. Some girl might be into me. I'm killing and uh, Packy pushed him out. Everybody's high five and Packy. Oh, yeah. Great time. House part, like classic out of a movie, you know. Uh, there's fucking toilet paper hanging from everything. Everybody's got solo cups and music's playing. And my beeper's going off like crazy. You know, it's probably like nine at night at this point. Just like 911, 911, mom, 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 mom. And I'm like, ugh. So I get my best phone voice, you know, and I call my mom and I go, hello, uh, how are you? What's up? And she's like, get the fuck home right now. The police are here. Oh, shit. And I was like, ah, shit. And I was like, well, I'm out. I'm out. What are you talking about? I'm trying to play dumb. She's like, get home. Shut up. Fuck you. Get home. And I was like, ah. So this is where it gets interesting. This is where. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm hammered. You know, I'm like lights out, gone, blotto, smashed. And I'm going home. I got to go home. I tell everybody, they're like, oh, you're fucked, dude. What's going on? Oh, my God. You shouldn't be driving. I'm like, I got to go home. My friend goes, wait, before you leave. And he hands me a big jar of Jif. Peanut he, butter. Peanut butter. I've, yeah. And he a goes, friend of mine used to do this, too. Eat a gob of it. I just put my hand in. And he's, and he's like, you can't smell booze over the peanut butter, which I didn't know. Did you know that? I only have a, I only know it because a friend of mine would do this. He swore by it too. I never tried it though. Yeah, I mean, I had he friends swore who swore by it. They'd keep it in the glove box yeah. just in case they got yes. pulled over. Instead of not drinking and driving, yeah. they would actually buy peanut butter. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. He would also, I'm not even kidding you, he would also wear a priest costume sometimes. Shut up. I swear to God. Come on. I swear to God. Wow. He purposely bought a wagon. Get out of here. Also, instead of not drinking and driving, yeah. he bought a wagon, a, I swear to God, a priest costume. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and he would eat peanut butter. Does he have kids now? Yeah. You don't He's had be, them. He's uh, had them. Oh, gee, that's oh, a yeah. bad look. You're yeah. just driving a wagon with a priest <laughs> outfit with a couple of kids in there. You're like, no, no, they're my kids. That's not a good look. <laughs> so go ahead. You have pe- you eat a gob of peanut butter. Gob of peanut butter. I haul ass home. Uh, I get to the house. There's three cop cars outside. The whole thing. And I'm like, oh god. But again, when you're so drunk, you kind of just like accept everything. You're like, ah, what whatever happens happens. I wasn't that scared because I was I was basically in a blackout. But you also didn't think at all like, well, here's my chance to stay where I'm at, deal with this later, so I don't get a DUI or they don't see me drunk. That didn't even register. It, it didn't register because the the way my mom was on the phone was like, like, I don't give a fuck. You better get here. Exactly. Like yeah. you're, we're gonna come find you if you don't come here. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, let me just get this over with. And again, you're drunk, so you're like, all right, I'll deal with this. Fuck it. 
So I get home. There's cop cars outside. I walk in, swing that door open. There's three cops drinking tea in the living room with my two parents. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. So I show up and they're like, what the hell? They pop up and, uh, you know, what the hell? We heard this. We heard that. A guy is in the hospital because he jumped out of your car. What the blood? I'm like, whoa, I don't know. Any- I played. I denied the whole thing, which is so crazy. So then the cops go, you've been drinking? I go, no, no. They smelled my breath. Got by, which is insane. They go outside. They go, that's the plate. We got the plate. When he and went I was back like, there. I don't know anything you're talking about. You guys are crazy. This is a, what? I was at a party. What are you talking about? I've been out all night, you know? And they're like, no, no, no. And, you know, after about an hour, I just caved. I was like, all right. He was in my car. We, my friend pushed him out. I bumped a guy on the highway, blah, blah, blah. And that was it. They didn't arrest you or anything? No. Nothing. I Even after you admitted it? Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I was like, I bumped the guy on accident. Oh, okay. And three times. Three times. <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, I've been drinking. And nothing came of it. I don't know. I know that's a horrible ending, but. That's the greatest fucking ending you could wish for if you're you. Yeah, it was pretty good. I think my parents took my car away for like a month. I mean, whatever. Yeah, but it was a different time. This it was. This is like late 90s, whether it's like, well, you're okay, they're okay. I think I paid the guy's hospital bills. Uh, he broke his hand, turns out. That's it. Falling out of the car, yeah. Broke his hand. I think the other guy had some some priors. I think the long-haired guy had some stuff. So they're like, he's not going to press charges, but, you know, you got to be careful. I got the speech. Lost the car. And I think it helped. I was 17. Yeah. You know? You're a minor still. You yeah. Know? And yeah. that was it. I mean, I swear to God, I, is it a white privilege? I don't know what you want to call it, but got lectured by the parents. They put me in alcohol counseling. What's How's that different than uh, AA? I think it's for kids. It's different. Oh. I had to go to the this lady, and she, she was like, are your parents abusing you? And I remember being like, oh, I could really... <laughs> Get them on this one. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 I'm not. And uh, yeah, I had to d- take a bunch of tests and go to therapy for a few sessions. But that was it. It was like therapy was the punishment. And I was like, I'll take it. I'll take that any day. Yeah. So I feel bad just dropping it off a cliff. But that's what happened. I, I got by. That's the story. That's it. Staying hydrated isn't only for the athletes and champions in this world. It's a daily maintenance every single person needs. Proper functional hydration is essential, and Liquid IV is the number one powder hydration brand in America. Their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. With just one stick, you can hydrate two times faster than water alone, plus get essential vitamins and three times the electrolytes as leading sports drinks. All right, you know I love Liquid IV. They've been with us for a long time. My favorite one still is the citrus orange. I love it. Uh, We have it here at the studio. We give it out to people all the time. They take it. We use it. Take it on tour. It's a great way to stay hydrated, especially. Look, I have a lot of people who drink. I can't drink anymore. And they tell me that legit helps them in the mornings after hangovers, things like that. So Liquid IV believes that equitable access to clean and abundant water is the foundation of a healthier world. They partner with leading organizations to fund and foster innovative solutions that help communities protect both their water and their futures. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDEW at checkout. That's 20% off of anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEYDEW at liquidiv.com. Now, let's get back to the do. Tell us this one about this uh, wild Midwest road gig. Oh, this happened two weeks ago. This is no, fresh. Oh, really? All fresh. right. Hell yeah. All right. Th- th- now, buckle up, because this has some twists, some turns. It's a roller coaster of, of jizz here. <laughs> All right. So, got a gig in Davenport, Iowa. Mm-hmm. I had a special coming out, and I'm, I need new material. So, I told my agent, book me in some weird off-market places. Don't go to Denver. Don't go to Austin. Don't go to Phoenix. Book Chicopee, Mass, Lancaster, PA, Davenport, Iowa. Get me in the in the sticks. Mm-hmm. So he puts me in Davenport, Iowa. The flight is a cunt. American Airlines stinks. Sucks. The worst. So I have a flight to Chicago at 8 a.m. Chicago Connect land in Moline, Iowa, which is about 15 minutes from Davenport. So I go, all right, I can do this. Flight gets canceled. Uh 
I'm like, ah, fuck. So now I'm up all night. Like, what do I do? I'm texting the agent. Hey, flight's canceled. I don't know what to do. There's no flights out of Moline. It's not looking good. Maybe we'll fly you to Chicago, and then you get a car. So we did that. So we flew to Chicago, got a car. That flight was delayed. So now I, mean, I landed in, in Chicago at like nine at night, and it's a three-hour drive or four-hour drive. So I missed the gig. But it, I, it was a two two Friday, two Saturday, mm-hmm. or two sa- Saturday, two Sunday, whatever it was. So I missed the first two. Yeah, so, so the half agent, your money's gone. It's gone. But yeah. the agent goes, let's put one of those shows, because it was sold out. Mm-hmm. So it's a tiny room. The room was about the size of this one. <laughs> sold out. So we'll move one of the shows to... The next night. So now you have three on Sunday. So we lost one show. I can deal with that. Spent the whole day at the airport. Brutal. Land in Chicago. I go meet up with my opener, Andrew. He's in Chicago, too, waiting for me. And uh, because he had to connect, too. But he was like, well, if you're in Chicago, I'll just drive with you. I was like, all right, great. Meet up with him. We go to a hotel. I'm like, it's been the longest day of my life. I've been up all night. Been at the airport all day. I want to kill myself. Let's just get a drink and go to bed. And then tomorrow, he had the rental car already. So like tomorrow we'll jump in the car, we'll go to Davenport. Easy peasy. Shows at five o'clock, then seven, then nine. So we'll drive there. It's a three, four hour drive. We'll leave at eleven AM. We'll get there at three, four. We're good to go. We get hammered. <laughs> we just another shot after shot after shot. We're in Chicago. It's a great city. We're having a it great is time. A great, city. great town. And it's it's Saturday night or whatever. So it's like bumping. So we just got sucked right in. So, of course, we get shit housed, And then we did that thing that the stupidest thing you do with buddies where you get hammered. The bars close. You go to your hotel. His room is a door, two doors down from mine. We sit in the room and talk till like six in the morning. So now we wake up and we're supposed to get up at nine to leave at 10 or whatever. We wake up at like noon. So we're banged up. We're on no sleep. We wake up at noon. We go get lunch. And then we just start driving. Now, he got a rental car, and the only two options, the rental car business is fucked, right? Bro, something's going on. He got a, he either could get an F-150 or a Chevy Bolt electric. <laughs> yep. So what would you have gotten? The 150. Really? Yeah. He was like, that's too much car. We're doing it a long distance. It's going to be a gas guzzler. I'll get the electric. Yeah, I want to be comfy. Huge mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> fuck electric. Uh, fuck Musk. Fuck all you queefs, because those things stink. The Tesla's not bad, but any other electric car is bad news. So we get in the electric car. It's fully charged, and we're driving. Three and a half hour drive. It just starts. That energy bar is going down like a video game, and we're looking at it. We're like an hour in. It's down. It went started at 250, and it was down to like 68, and we're like, we got three, two more hours here. This is, we're not going to make it. Let's go charge it. So we go charge, but we're up against it. So we find, we're going, we're in Chicago. We get as far as uh, Rochelle. Not, uh, Dan Van Kirk's from Rochelle. Yes. My dog out there, Princess Lily Rose is from Rochelle. Really? Illinois. Born in Rochelle, Illinois. Small, small How about town. about that? Out yeah. of a movie. Main Street, it's all quiet, like uh, the hayseed goes by or the whatever that thing mm-hmm. is. And we get there, we're like, all right, we found a charger. Bitch to find a charger in the fucking wide open plain of Midwest. You know, you find a Tesla one, you can't use that. You find this one, that one's broken. We found one in the middle of a church parking lot in Rochelle. And we're like, all right, let's go. Let's get a taco or something while we wait. So we plug it in and we go, we'll give it like 20 minutes. That's how long a Tesla takes. And we just start walking around the town. Ah, 20 minutes is up. We go back. It went from like 54 to 56. And we're like, oh, my God, this is not going to work. And it looks on the dash, it says, it'll be finished charging at 11 p.m. And we're like, oh, no, we got to be at the gig at 5. Yeah. So we're freaking out. We don't know what to do. We're like, fuck you, Electric, God damn it, Edison, whoever. <laughs> Edison. And uh, <laughs> so Andrew knew Dan Van Kirk. No, did he? He goes. There we go, bro. Look at it. You're not going to believe it. We're in Rochelle. This town sucks. There's no one here. Our car is not charged. We got to get to Davenport. And he goes, I guess you can use my mom's car. And we're like, could we? I don't want to impose. This is a big ask. But they're pretty tight, those two. And he goes, yeah, but she's in a assisted living. <laughs> she's an older lady. So you're going to have to go to the old folks' home, get the keys. Oh, I love it. 
and then this is Dan Van Kirk's switch. mom. Yeah, hell yeah, DVK. Hell yeah, DVK. I mean, without him, we would be fucked. He saved the whole thing. Yeah. This guy is a is a mensch. So we're already just motherfucker. We're just trying to get to this dumb gig. We've already missed one night, and I, I should have just my agent's like, you can cancel, man. The room's the size of your dick. It's tiny, you know. Fuck it. And I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing the gig. So go to the old folks' home in the electric car. <laughs> And, you know, you got to check in. It's walkers. It's respiratory shit. You know, it's it's bleak. We go up, take the elevator, knock, knock, knock. I don't want to insult the lady, but, you know, hunched over, cane, old school, quilt over her, you know. Never even could look at me because she was so hunched. It was like she never gave one of these and, and saw me. She didn't do a thriller. <laughs> you know, she was just hunched yeah. over. And she goes, while you're here, I have no no one ever visits me. Could you move my my electric uh, old lady kind of craftmatic chair is broken? And she's like, I have another one in the bedroom. Could you swap it out? And we're like, of course, you got it. Happy to help. We appreciate you giving us the car. You got it. So we're two strapping hungover dudes. These things weigh 9 million pounds. <laughs> they got a motor in it. They're electric. It's brutal. I hate electric. Everything electric sucks. So... <laughs> Now we're uh, we're sweating out <laughs> fucking vodka tonics, and we move this thing over. We unplug it, and uh, it's got you know crumbs and shit all over it. We go to the bedroom, get the other one. We move that in, and the whole thing takes forever because you got to take breaks. They're so heavy. You're like, all right, sit it down, put it down. Okay. <laughs> so we finally move the 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 chairs. We get the keys. <clears throat> She's got a Ford Escape. Hallelujah, gas powered car. Mm -hmm. So we go okay. His uncle lives there. Let's put the electric car at his uncle's house. We'll put it in the driveway and we'll plug it in. God, you're using the whole extended family exactly. over here. Yeah, I Thank love it. God, I love it. The Van Kirks. And we go, we'll put the electric you're car. Using his uncle's electricity. <laughs> yeah. We had to open his garage, find an outlet. Uh, the neighbors were like, what the fuck's yeah, happening here? Serious. So we got the Ford Escape. And I go, look, <laughs> we've had a har harrowing day. Let, let's get some Wendy's. Let's do a little treat. I'm going to get some Frosties. Yeah. And a Andrew starts pulling his wallet. And I go, I got it. Come on. I got it. I'm the headliner. And these are, you know, 109. I can swing two yeah. Frosties. So we get a couple JBCs and a couple Nuggets. Get the Frosty. I throw my wallet on the dash, you know, make sure I got all the right money. We go to the house. We plug it in. We got the Ford Escape. It's fully uh, gassed up. We go, we're going to make it, God damn it. What a night. Or what a day. Brutal. We just start driving. Ah, we're going to make it. Holy shit. <clears throat> the gig's at five. So we got to Davenport, Iowa in this Ford Escape at about 4.38. We just made it. And we go, let's just check into the hotel. But then you got to think. He's still got to get this rental car back. He's still stuck with his car. I'm flying out of Davenport. So what are we going to do there? But he's like, I'll go get it or we'll, we'll figure it out. So I was like, all right, all right, but I might have to fly out of Davenport tomorrow or Moline. Uh, and he's like, oh, we'll figure it out. So we get to the hotel and the gigs, you know, the clock's ticking. The gigs in like 22 minutes and they go, all right, you want to check in credit card? And I go, where the hell's my wallet? I left it on the dash no, of the electric car because no. of the Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> The Frosty! The fucking Frosty. Dave Thomas, you cunt! <laughs> ah, God! So now, we have three shows ahead of us. We're hungover, we're on no sleep, we've had the worst day ever. They're about to start. About to start. We go to the gig. Um, you know, we do the three shows, it's Jesus fine. Christ. We sell merch. I mean, we really did it up. And I did three hours of comedy, you know, and uh, flipping the room, the whole thing. So now we go, all right. Here's what we'll do. We'll get back in the gas car, drive to the Rochelle. uncle's house, Rochelle, yeah. get my wallet. Mm -hmm. Then I had a, you know, Moline to Chicago, Chicago to New York. So I said, let's just drive to Chicago. We'll get another hotel room and I'll just take the, the second flight home and he'll do the same. Great. Or we're, he's furious at me. He's like, you forget your wallet. What the hell? It was going so well, blah, blah, blah. So... We get the wallet, we go back, and we go, oh, the car is probably charged, so we can drop the Ford Escape off, get back in the electric car. It's been hours. It's been like 12 hours. We'll just drive that to Chicago, get a hotel, drop it off at the airport in the morning, we fly home. 
We get to the car, finally get my wallet, thank God, after all this shit. We check the car, it's been plugged in. It's at like 88. It didn't go up. <laughs> it went up like 40 notches. Yeah. 88, it's like a two, uh, two. Uh, it goes by miles. So the I think it was like 241 miles to get to Chicago, and it's at 88 miles. So we're like, what the fuck is going on here? Should we get an Uber? My God, I can't believe it. And I go, I'm so pissed. I'm just going to drive it. I am just going to drive it till the wheels fall off. I'm going to hit the gas, heading towards Chicago, and just creep until I get to Chicago. Fuck electricity. Fuck this vault, bolt, whatever. And he goes, well, what if we put it on cruise control? That maybe you'll use less. Because I was going like 95. That's that's what was burning it out. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we get on cruise control and we're 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 making it. It's working, but cruise control slow. So what turned into a three and a half hour ride was now like a five hour ride because mm. I'm going like 52 down the highway. Because if you go faster, it kept dropping. So I'm watching it go 78, 77, 76, and I'm just like, it was like Thelma and Louise. We're holding hands, you know. <laughs> I got the wheel like, ah, fuck it, we're going all the way, <laughs> and we made it. You with like did. two oh, notches yeah. left. Because, you know, it's like a car on E. Mm -hmm. It's still got a little life in it. Yeah. So we got there and he goes, now it's that weird thing of like, we're home. Let's get a hotel room. Let's go to bed. We got an airport hotel. And he's like, well, I have to drive this in the morning. So I can't have it dead. So I said, all right. It's fucking six in the morning. My flight's at nine. That means you got to get there at eight, whatever. So we sit in a Best Buy parking lot, charging it. No, I, we had to. I, I couldn't leave a soldier, you know. He just want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. So now we're charging it. It's quiet. We hate each other. It's the worst night of our lives. We're charging. We're charging. It gets up to like six, and we go. All right, six is enough to get to the rental car place. We park the car. We go to the hotel. We forgot to book two rooms, <laughs> so we have to sleep in the same bed. <laughs> I mean, it's like a John Hughes movie. It's Planes, Trains. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> it really is. So now we're sleeping in the same bed. I get like, you know, 20 minutes of shut-eye, and uh, I go to the airport. He gets the car, drops it off, and we got home. But God damn, dude. Worst gig ever. All for Davenport. I hope you appreciate it. You come guzzling Nazis, because it, uh, it was brutal. Brutal gig. But we made it, and the lady got her chair fixed. <laughs> Damn man, Kirk saving the day he out there. Totally saved it. That's we appreciate it. Watch him pen pals with Roy Scoville. Great podcast. Great pod. Great, podcast. great guy. Great mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, great mom. Um, I want to hear the story about being fired from a huge TV job. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is bad. I love when people get honest. So. <laughs> I love it because people out there see the finished product. Yes. And they think that guy's got it all. He's probably right. never been embarrassed or never. <laughs> he just got all the answers. Oh, no, not me. I'm, I'm still I have a poor kid mentality. You know, yeah, like, me why too, don't you just change your flight or get a go to first class? I'm like, I, I don't know. Who am I getting first class? Whatever. Young comic broke New York City, been mugged, had bed bugs, living way out in Brooklyn. Day job, construction, janitor, you name it. I was I, I just a shitty, I was a shit-kicking comic just trying to get by. Open mics, the whole thing. I do a set at a club. A guy sees me, and I had a good set. And he goes, you're edgy, you're dark. We like that. We're looking for a, a host to host a show on AOL. That was when AOL said some shine on it, mm -hmm. you know. We'll pay you $5,000, which at the time was like, yeah, ah, yeah, oh, my Epstein? Holy yeah. shit, this is a lot of money. <laughs> so they go, we'll pay you five grand. All you got to do is write some jokes, and you're going to host a Halloween show, and we're going to do it a week before Halloween. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was Halloween. So you do a, a sh an hour a day for five days until Halloween, the big, big finale. So I said, you got it, sir. I am in. And we wrote a ton of jokes. We had a writer's room, and this was a big production. They had a, a, co a costume contest on the first day. Second day was like a bobbin for apples or whatever. Third day was candy rating. You know, it was a whole to do. So he kept saying, we like that you're edgy. Be edgy. We want some, some stank on this show. You know, it's the internet. It's the Wild West. It's AOL. It's not TV. I said, great. And we wrote for two weeks. We built sets. I got to know everybody. It was great. 
First show, Monday. Here we go, baby. You're going to do a costume contest. Then you're going to put on a dress and do a cu- uh, a man on the street in drag. On You are. Know, I am. Okay. So that was, the, that was Monday. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday was another thing. And then Wednesday was another thing. Whatever. So we have it all mapped out. We got storyboards. We got big wall of whiteboards up there with all the shit, all these jokes and, on it. And has this been run through people? Is it approved by anyone or is it just you and your crew working on this? It's their crew. I'm just okay. the host. Got but it. I wanted to be hands on. I've never made this kind of money in my sure. life. I want to kill it. Yeah. And uh, so everyone's privy to these sketches and everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. all on the up and up. Okay. Everybody loves it. Everybody's excited. And, you know, with a lot of promo, AOL with Mark Norman coming out, Halloween spectacular. Here we go. So it's five days. I'm pumped. I love it. it it's nice to be, you know, there's coffee there, the snacks at these uh, these studios. It's, it's uh, I was a janitor, you know. This is like a, a nice little world to live in, air conditioning, and there was girls there. It was, it was great. So it was showbiz. So uh, Monday comes around. I got a big night's sleep on Sunday night. Here we go. Monday morning. Time for work. We do the big Halloween contest. I got the Bob Barker skinny mic. I got the uh, the fun jacket on. And I'm killing. It's a full live audience and a bleacher full of people in costumes. You got Buzz Lightyear. You got a Scarecrow. You got Dracula. You got everything. A couple of hot ladies and, you know, women. They dress like whores on Halloween <laughs> yeah. for some reason, which we all appreciate. But uh, it's this weird green light to dress like a skank, and God bless you, ladies. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm hosting. It's a hot crowd. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, Superman comes up. I go, hey, well, uh, nice horse accident. You know, uh, <laughs> when did you start walking again? You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm putting my own stank on it. This uh, Catwoman comes up. I'm talking leather whip, you know, tight dress, big black hair. The cat eyes, super sexy jokes, you know, pussy this, pussy that, you know, having a good time, cracks the whip. Everybody's great. Next up, African queen, beautiful black woman, you know, got the neck, uh, those those rings, Mm -hmm. you know, sexy lady, hot outfit. And I'm doing this, doing that. And I go, the the cat woman's going off and the African queen's coming on. They pass each other. And I go, hey, hey, watch that whip around the African. (laughs) I thought it was a decent line. <laughs> they said be edgy. I watched the cameras go. <laughs> you saw the camera. I mean, they wilted like a daisy. The lights flickered. Uh, the audience <laughs> went, oh, what the fuck was that? I look at the producer. He was not into it. I was so proud of the joke. I couldn't wait to tell it. And uh, yeah, so, you know, you have a bomb. It happens. You, mm-hmm. They're not all going to be gems. So I go, all right. That one didn't land, but, you know, on to the next one. We do more jokes, more jokes, more <laughs> costumes, more contest. I go immediately from there. We wrap up. We have a big thing. Applause. Yay. This guy won. He's, uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden. He fell down or whatever. That was his guy. That was before Joe Biden. I don't know who he was, but some guy won. So then I get rushed to makeup, and I'm putting on full drag, like mini skirt, sequin top, uh, big eyelashes, fake eyelashes, big red wig, nails, makeup, lipstick, and uh, this guy comes in with a clipboard. You know, he's the head honcho, and he goes, uh, hey, uh, ladies, because all these women are putting shit on me. He goes, ladies, can you give me give us the room? And I was like, oh, boy, all right, here we go. I, I got the head honcho in here. He's going to tell me what's next. Here we go. Maybe good job. And he goes, we got to talk. And I can immediately feel like, oh, this is bad. And I go, what's up? And he goes, yeah, the sponsors. They didn't like uh, the whip joke. And I go, ah, oh, am I fired? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> That's and, how. <laughs> yeah, and I had the, you know, I'm in the, yeah. the director chair. Yeah. I remember going, like, oh, I had the big uh, eyelashes. In I was like, what are you talking about? In a wig and yeah. a mini skirt. Yeah, it was just like the slowest <laughs> moment of my life. And I was about to go out on the street. I was all geared up to do a QA and a and a dress. I couldn't wait. I had heels on, stockings. And he's like, yeah, you got to go. And I'm like, got to go. Uh, we got a whole week of, of shoot left. He's like, we'll find someone else. You're, you you got to go. And they had two guys escorted me out in like black turtlenecks and and blazers. Like big giant. Be- in drag? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I took the wig off and I put my pants on, but I didn't even have time to scrub. So I just was out on Broadway at fucking 1230 in the day with fucking makeup on and eyelashes and nails and lipstick. And I was like. 
I guess that's it. And I went home and I fucking cried my eyes out. I, I didn't know what <laughs> to do. Mascara running down yeah. your cheeks. Yeah, and shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All by myself. The whole thing. And uh, I couldn't believe it because he said, be edgy. I remember calling a comic and they go, they never mean that. Are you they a don't, retard? They don't know crazy? what edgy means. That's they don't the know. problem. Exactly. They don't know what edgy means. No. And I thought I was doing the right thing. And uh, boy, they were none too pleased. I got escorted out. I went home. I scrubbed the makeup off, and uh, I, I I said, "Well, you said be edgy," and I'm emailing with the guy, mm -hmm. and he he didn't want to pay me. He's like, "Oh no, you got to get paid for the work you did." He's like, "You did a half hour work. It's a week long shoot." I said, "But I, I'd love to do the shoot. You fired me." He's like, "Well, you went too far." And I said, "Well, you said be edgy, so we're fighting. We're fighting, and we eventually got paid. But they hired some uh, like hot girl to do the rest of it." And so she got the gig, and I told her, I was like, hey, don't fucking go for it. You know, yeah. are you crazy? Just keep it on the up and up. Keep it PG. And she killed it. And, uh, yeah, that was that was the – I've been fired a few times, but that was the worst. In a dress for doing what I thought I was supposed to do. It was all very confusing. But I got paid, and uh, I got a story out of it. Um, give me another time you've been fired. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's another good one that's not comedy related? Uh, okay. You said I, you did a lot of jobs. You worked a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. I was a registrar at New York Film Academy, which is like uh, I do the admissions and I do the if you're absent four times, you're on probation. It was the I was the I was like a discipline guy. I'm a fucking chooch. I shouldn't be doing that. I love the word chooch. And they're making you also not just keep record, but you have to talk to them. Yes. Oh God, no. That's yeah. That's one thing to keep stats for yeah, them. I'll yeah, I'll keep stats yeah. all day, but I had to go talk to the guy. You know, I'm a. What I'm, made you take that job? I was broke. I was. I lived in New York. I went to New York Film Academy, okay. and then I moved there to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. After that, I had graduated from there, and I was like, "This is the only place I know in New York." So I just went right back there, and I said, "Can I work here?" And I, I got a job as a file clerk, literally. Big room full of file cabinets, wall to wall, and I would they would hand me a stack this high of manila folders, and I would go in. I was like, you guys don't have the internet? We don't have a fucking Excel spreadsheet? We're going 1941 manila? So I would just file all day. I had paper cuts, and I worked my way up to registrar because nobody wanted to do that gig. So I'm kicking kids out who are trying to live their fucking dreams. Oh, you're actually having to kick them out too? Yeah, oh my kids God. Are, I'm, uh, I'm from Poland and I've always wanted to come here and I, 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 I got no money. And I'm like, I, you got to go. I, I, I don't care, but they care. And they're like, he's like, I'll be better. It's like some 18 year old kid. He just wants to be Tarantino. And I'm like, you got to hit the bricks, Polak. And <laughs> not good. I hate it. I hate it. I got like an ulcer. My hair was falling out. I hated the job because I, I don't want to. I'm trying to, I'm living my dream in New York. I want to be a comedian. Yeah. And I'm telling these kids no. So eventually I would just start sliding kids, like changing their numbers. You know, like, hey, uh, you can stay. I can't kick you out. I can't do this to you. You, know, you got a house or a, an apartment for six months. I can't. What? What? This is crazy. So I started cooking the books. Did you? Yeah, because I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to you know, fire these kids or get rid of them. And they caught me and I got fired. How'd they catch you? Well, you know, the teacher would be like, this kid was never here. He's been absent like, uh, you know, five days in a month. And it says two days. And then they started doing the numbers. And obviously, because they still take attendance. And then I would go, oh, yeah. I would have the main the main uh, sheet. Mm -hmm. And I'd go, no, I would erase it. It was, all, it was so obvious. I changed a six <laughs> to a one. You know, it was so obvious. It was all very uh, analog. Mm -hmm. And they got me and I got fired. But I was trying to I was trying to help these kids out. You know, these kids, they don't know any their their language barrier. They live in New York. The subways are brutal. They come up the wrong way. They it's miss class. crazy expensive. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. insane. Yeah. So I couldn't do it. And I got I got nixed. Give me another comedy fucking firing. <laughs> Give me one more. Well, how about this one? I don't know. You told the story about the Seinfeld stuff last time where he, Oh, I did. You ran the light a yeah, little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. was bad. I still, I still remember that. How about this one? You ever have this? I did a gig in uh Youngstown, Ohio, not bragging, at the Funny Farm, which is no longer there. It's okay. gone. It was a real shit box. Just a piece of garbage club. And you ever had this? I'm, I'm a young comic. I'm broke. I'm happy to be headlining. I'm making like 800 bucks for the weekend. You lose 500 on the flight, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm just like, do what I got to do to get by. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to play ball and I'm eating dinner between shows. I, you know, you, yeah, you can order this side of the menu, whatever. 
I'm eating dinner, and the manager, the owner, is like, you got to get the swordfish. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's a free meal. I'll get the fucking swordfish. What am I eating? And he goes, there's a wine that pairs well with that. I'm like, Jesus, wine. This is this is high end over here. So I drink a bottle of wine. I'm eating swordfish. And he's like, you want dessert? I was like, I'll take the tiramisu. <laughs> another glass of wine, another glass of wine. I'm like, all right, I got a, another show to do here. And the bill comes. It's like $312. <laughs> He's billing you for real, dude. Get the fuck out. This motherfucker upsold me. I would never get swordfish or wine in my life. Yeah. I don't even like wine. <laughs> and he, he rooked me. And I was like, wait, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you can only order from this side of the menu. It's like, you know, chicken fingers, mozzarella sticks, nachos. Yeah. And you got the swordfish. I'm like, you pushed me to get the <laughs> you swordfish. You told me to get the swordfish. You saw it. So he totally got me, and I, I lost money on the gig because of the fucking... That's ridiculous, because yeah. of swordfish. Market price swordfish, this cunt. <laughs> He's like, it's out of season. It's hard to get that shit in Ohio. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, he got me. <laughs> so I've yeah. had clubs hit me up before, and I'll ask you. I don't know what's more offensive. I know what's cheaper, but I don't know what's more offensive. I've had clubs bill me for... I don't drink. Yeah. I smoke. Uh, they'll bill me for Diet Cokes. No. Yeah. Clubs. I've had two clubs do it. Wow. Charge me for sodas. And I'm like, you're going to charge me for fucking sodas right Unreal. now? Are you serious? Those people should be beheaded. Seriously. Like, come on. Yeah, you're going to charge club? me for fucking sodas. But we're not talking like an improv. Are we talking? No, like we're a, talking like a funny farm. Like a C room. Like, like a that. bonkers yeah. with a Z or, or Looney Bin or <laughs> one of those fucking rooms. But yeah, I did them all. But that was the first time I got upsold and charged. And charged. Yeah, that guy was a scumbag. I mean, I, who knows what he's doing now? But the guy before me, I told a friend, he's like, I've done that club. The guy shorted me on money and just put a gun on the table, like casually, like, ah, oh, here's your, supposed to be 800, here's your, your 600. And he's like, ah, oh, it's supposed to be 800. He's like, hold on, let me uh, put my gun down. And he was like, all right, I'm out of here. So I guess I got off easy. No gun. <laughs> Dude, this has been a great episode. Oh, hey, thanks. Dude, you've been this fucking. I'm still laughing about the guy hanging out of your fucking car. It's insane. Yeah, I feel that's insane. I dude. feel bad about the ending, but it's it. We got uh, it. Got away with it. You I got, got lucky. a great story out of it. You did get lucky. Very lucky. Uh, dude, one more time, please plug, promote everything, anything you'd like. Hey, hey, MarkNormanComedy.com for tickets. I'm all over the country doing a big theater tour, going to Europe. Tuesdays with Stories, We Might Be Drunk podcast. We got to get you on that, by the way. I'd love to. All right, we'll get you real high. I'd love to. All right, and then, uh, yeah, watch the special. Soup to Nuts, Netflix. A lot of Holocaust jokes. We go for it. We really push it. I can't believe uh, no one's attacked me yet. <laughs> it's coming. Are you disappointed? No, okay, no, good. I hate the backlash, right, but <laughs> the R word will get you. Yeah, well, uh, Thank you, man, for real. Uh, and as always... Uh, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Come see me on tour. Tickets are available on my web website for all stops, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.